And all the people that donated, like, you know, my heart goes out to them, especially, you know, those that give a little bit, that means a lot. Thank you, thank you very much. And and whoever donated a lot to kind of blow us away, but there's always these, you know, I call the people of the earth angels, no matter who they are. And uh, I believe that people are angels. And some of them do really know how to use their hearts and their minds. Just in listening and trying to understand. Yeah. You shared so much knowledge mm -hmm. and you were so patient with us and we learned a lot of really important life skills on behalf of all of us. Like oh we always just talk about how grateful we are to be here. I was always like kind of lost and grasping at things and always wanting to come back to the land, always in the back of my heart, in the back of my mind. I used to always think about this place, coming back as much as I can. And uh, I always had to go back because I didn't have no money to, you know, start, start my own place around here. And uh, it was a long struggle just to get here. And now that's why I'm so happy this is happening. You know, some kind of hope. Oh, it takes a strong courage almost to be in a shnabe. Darling's story is so really heartbreaking. Uh, this uh, colonization has uh, brought uh, havoc, destruction, and uh, displacement of uh, ancestral lands from the indigenous people all around the world. Our particular situation in the Philippines, which is not uh, uh, exactly the same, but uh, the oppression is uh, identical, the same. I want to thank Darlene for her courage in standing up for her uh, tribe's uh, rights. And uh, I look forward to having this sustained. A lot in North America don't quite appreciate the value of access to land, working the land. I don't mean it just in terms of being able to, but rather the question of owning the land, of being able to decide what happens on it. And when, once you actually have control and, and uh, the means to do it, actually being able to do it. She is reclaiming her traditional territory, which is very important because uh, this is her family's trap line and it's been in her family for generations. In our his history, government policies have always tried to remove us from the land by putting in legislation like the Indian Act that disenfranchises and, and dispossesses. This is just only the beginning of um, my lo long-term plans, you know, to start a learning center here, teaching a few people about, you know, maybe treaty teachings would happen here as well, get the youth out here, get them to enjoy, you know, being on the lake or just being in the bush, somewhere where there's no planes, cars or anything, just be right in the, in the, in the forest. I got all these big plans, even the chiefs meeting out here, instead of, you know, fancy rooms where they'll get distracted by bright lights, you know. If they want to talk serious about the land, they should come and sit here on the land. The reason being why this cabin is being built is because it's, this is my family's trap line. Yeah. We have been here for ages. Mm -hmm. so the Nishinaabe fully understands that this is their land. I grew up here. Yeah. I've lived here. I yeah. eat fish. I hunt. I, I do everything here. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that's got to be understood by... Uh, this is the funny thing that gets me. All you non-natives live in Indian country, but you guys never take it into consideration where the Nishinaabe really is from. When, oh, I live I in the, when I live in the city, I can't afford the hydro, I can't afford electricity, mm. let alone a phone. Yeah. No internet, I can't afford anything. Mm. So I'm pushed, the white society pushed me back onto the land.
There's a train coming. 